Welcome to Property Law 101. I'm Sarah Bronin, and I created this series to help you understand the basics of property law. We cover what I consider to be the four fundamental questions of property and property law. And the third question is the one we're focusing on today, and that is using property. Okay, so using property. In another video, we cover the definition of a nuisance or the elements of nuisance at least the one that I prefer. Uh, but others, as I said in that video, have different definitions. And specifically, I mentioned in that video, the definition of the 1979 second restatement of torts, which is a nuisance is, quote, uh, a non-trespassery invasion of another's interest in private use and enjoyment of land, end quote. The reason I recite that definition for you is that it's very interesting that the word non-trespassery is included in that definition. The use of that word suggests that for jurists, it's very important to distinguish between uh, the concepts of nuisance law and trespass law. How that distinction is treated today is the focus of today's video. So the difference between nuisance and trespass. Uh, in another video, you, so if you probably want to know what trespass is, we, we define that in another video. We define trespass as an unprivileged intentional intrusion on property possessed by another. And meanwhile, in case you don't recall from the nuisance elements video, I should probably re-up that definition. We define nuisance as an act, even a lawful act, that substantially and unreasonably interfered with the quiet, with a neighbor's use of quiet enjoyment of land. Okay, so these two definitions, how do you tell them apart? You have intrusion in one definition, you have interference in the other definition. You have the concept of unprivileged or un the word unprivileged in one definition. You have unreasonable and reasonably in another. You might be asking yourself, aren't these kind of the same thing? So looking back uh, to the past, judges looked at these two uh, common law doctrines, trespass and nuisance, and distinguished them uh, on the basis of the nature of the intrusion as the facts revealed. It was thought, in, again, in the past that a nuisance might be an activity with an indirect impact whereas a trespass might be those activities with a direct impact. Today, judges look less at that and more at the nature of pro the property right implicated when they have to distinguish between trespass and nuisance. And to explain this, we go back to the Blackstonian bundle of property covered in greater detail in another video. That bundle includes, as you might recall, the right to exclude, the privilege to use, the power to transfer, and the right of quiet enjoyment. A trespass infringes on the right to exclude. Uh, nuisance law seems to be, I'm sorry, trespass law seems to be about our ability to exclude others from gaining uh, access to or possessory rights to land. A nuisance, on the other hand, infringes on the right to quiet enjoyment, so a different stick in the Blackstonian bundle of sticks. Sometimes, and I'll admit this, it is difficult to figure out whether a set of facts presents a nuisance claim or a trespass claim. Those are the kinds of facts you probably get on law exams. Uh, but courts might also look at whether the defendant's action was committed on or off the plaintiff's land uh, they might look at whether the invasion was committed by tangible matter or some intangible substance. So there are other factors in addition to the ones that we've mentioned that courts might weigh. Perhaps for this reason, the fact that there is so much balancing and trying and, and, and weighing and, and factual analysis that looks at, at determining the differences between the two, courts in some limited, limited instances have allowed the same set of facts to justify an action running in parallel with nuisance and with trespass. Okay, so that said, nonetheless, there are, doc there, there are enough distinctions in these doctrines 
that commentators have used the distinction between nuisance type rules and trespass type rules to describe particular areas of property law. So what do I mean by this? Um, in other videos, we have talked about water rights. I would like to mention briefly here, remind you about the concept of diffuse surface water. This is water that might gather during a storm that might flood and damage property. In the common law, there is a rule called the common enemy rule that gives every property owner the right to protect his or her own property by doing things like building walls or ditches to repel uh, these diffuse surface waters to other properties, even if that means that you're damaging neighbors' properties by diverting the surface water onto it. So the common enemy rule, again, traditional common law rule has been slowly replaced by a reasonableness standard, whether it was reasonable for somebody to divert water to someone else's property. Some call this shift in that water law area, a shift from a trespass-like doctrine to a nuisance-like doctrine. And again, what does that really mean? So trespass is a bright line rule of property law. If you intrude, if you break that plane of property ownership uh, and you satisfy the, the elements of trespass, you are a trespasser. Nuisance, meanwhile, is a balancing test area of law. What is reasonable involves the weighing of lots of different parties' interests, uh, lots of factual scenarios, uh, the nature of uh, the right that's implicated, and so on. So in sum, I hope this uh, helped to illustrate some differences between uh, nuisance and trespass. It's an important distinction and mostly is a clear one. So I will leave it there. I will look forward to hearing from you, connecting on Twitter or through my website where you can sign up to my mailing list and see you next time.